All right, we have another video about a lot of the agencies and more kind of radiation safety and administration type questions, but it's important to know, even as a therapy physicist, because you will be dealing with these throughout your career. So to begin, what is the NRC's role in radiotherapy? What is an agreement state? Is yours one or not? Describe the role of NCRP, NRC, FDA, state regulations, and agreement states in radiation therapy. What roles govern radiation safety and isotope transportation? What is the re release criteria for I-125, palladium-103, and I-131 thyroid ablation treatment? So right off the bat, NRC's role in radiation therapy. So they make CFRs, that is codes of federal regulations that agreement or non-agreement states must abide by. They govern byproduct material like cobalt, but not radiation producing machines. So they make these CFRs. They also govern byproduct material. So cobalt, uh, often iridium, things of that nature, byproduct materials. There we go. So now what is an agreement state and is yours or not? So an agreement state can have their own regulations, which must be at least as strict or stricter than federal regulations. And now whether yours is one or not, I don't know, but you definitely need to know whether you are in an agreement state or if you are not. So now let's do the roles of the NCRP and all those. So NCRP, let's put it right down here. This, they pretty much provide recommendations. Now I'm going to be very simple with these because we don't want to take too much. Again, the NRC are those byproduct materials and CFRs. Now we got the FDA, which I always thought was odd because you think of them as food, but nope, they are also important in radiation therapy. That is the manufacturing, it's, it's tough to write and talk, manufacturing of radiation machines. So any Linux that are made, any radiation machines and manufacturing of them is uh, kind of really brought by FDA and the rules and regulations are from them. Now the states, so we'll just say the states in general. So the medical use of radiation machines. So that is important distinction where FDA can't tell you anything about how to run your radiation clinic. That is each individual state's uh, position. And then agreement state and we'll just say as strict as the NRC. So important to know these, you don't need to dive too far into the weeds with these, but you definitely need to know where they stand, what they stand for and why they are important. So now what rules govern radiation safety and isotope transportation? And so the best way I can really think about doing this is writing the important CFRs and then talking about which ones they cover. So we got 10 CFR 20, that should be common. 10 CFR 35, maybe a little less. We got 10 CFR 71. And there's also these things called new regs, which are important too. And we will look at 1556. So 10 CFR 20. So this is pretty much the standards of radiation protection. That's where you're going to get a lot of your dose limits, things of that nature. You got 10 CFR 35. So that is your byproduct material. So we're talking about iridium. We're talking about cobalt and the medical use of those. 10 CFR 71. Now that is packaging and transport of radiation material. So this, when you have an HDR source and you have to send it through FedEx and you got to go through all those steps, that is all based on 10 CFR 71, you know, finding what's the dose rate or exposure rate one meter away, what are the signages, all of that stuff is in there. And then finally, new reg is the releases for radioactive patients. 
So we'll cover a couple of those here too. I thought I'd lump this in rather than make it its own video. So again, new reg 1556, releasing radioactive patients in new regs help clarify specific CFR regulations. So rather than having a whole new CFR, you can have a new reg that just clarifies. So release criteria for I-125 and palladium. Now, this is important because they are different. And honestly, I know memorization of numbers isn't great. I didn't like doing it, but I think these are important to know because you very well may get asked this. So for iridium, thankfully, nice and easy. One MR per hour at one meter away. Now, peridium or palladium 103, that is less than three MR per hour at one meter. And then well, let's say I-131 here, we'll finish this off with less than seven MR per hour at one meter. And notice as the half-life decreased, the release level increased because the faster that these things are giving off uh, energy and exposure, the release level needs to be to increased because they're more dangerous to society because you may be around them for a shorter time and get more exposure than one that slowly decays. So kind of a full question. If you have any comments, please just post below. I'll help where I can. Best of luck studying. You guys can do it. And I'll see you in the next video.